Determining max and minimum values of a quadratic function can be done in a number of ways. I'm going to show you the few ways that the textbook shows it, and then later in the lesson I'm going to show you the easiest way to do it that the textbook somehow fails to mention. So when we look at max and min values, you know that they're going to occur on the vertex. The x value, which is the equation of the axis symmetry, and the y value will give you the maximum value. So if I did a quick sketch here of a parabola, and let's say it goes up like this and it comes down. So if it is concave down, it's going to have a maximum value. Obviously, see it goes up, this is the maximum height of the function. So when it's concave down, you have a maximum value and if this was the x of symmetry here, and let's say we're going by units of 1, that would mean this point here would be 2, 3. So x equals 2 would be the equation of the axis of symmetry, and 3 would be the maximum height. So you always want to know where the axis of symmetry is, and if you're just given the um, quadratic in vertex form, then all you have to do is look at the coordinates. So 2 is the axis of symmetry, 3 is the maximum height. That's as high as it goes. Now conversely, if the parabola was going the other way, just make a quick sketch of one here like this. Well, let's say it goes right down to there. So let's say this is 2 and 1. 2, 1. The axis of symmetry is the x-coordinate of the vertex. So x equals 2. And I'm just going to write a of s for axis of symmetry. And it has a minimum, minimum value. Is 1. So it occurs, the minimum value is the y-coordinate of your vertex. And in this case over here, the maximum value was the y-coordinate of the vertex. And the other values, the x-coordinates, give you the axis of symmetry. So the homework assignment for this section, um, I'm going to show you the way that the textbook likes to show you how to, to find things. And um, they give, let's start off with a really easy one. Uh, in your textbook, it's g at x equals minus 2 times x plus 1 squared minus 5. So obviously when you look at this, you should say, oh yeah, yeah, that's vertex form. I understand that. And the vertex will be minus 1 and minus 5. Minus 1, minus 5. That's a vertex. You read it. It's right there. Remember, x's are weird. It's in the brackets. It's shifted to the left one down 5. Now, you also have to check to see whether it's concave up or down. So this is concave down. So if I made a quick sketch of this function, it would be concave down, minus 1 and minus 5. Whoops, way down here. Concave down, let's say that was minus 5 here. So obviously, it's going to have a maximum height. So maximum height is minus 5. That's the maximum because there's nothing above it. So if you read from left to right as you follow your problem around, it goes up to the top and it comes back down. Or in this case, it goes down and then goes back up. So if you go down to the bottom, you're at the minimum height. This is the maximum height. So the vertex one is very easy because it's in vertex form. You can just read the vertex off. But something a little more complicated like this one, 2x squared plus 12x. And if you're asked to find the maximum height of this function, or minimum, what will it be? So you look here, it's concave up. If it's concave up, it's going to have a minimum value. Concave up, therefore minimum. So I'm going to factor this. That's one of the techniques you can use to find the zeros of the function. And once you have the zeros, then you can figure out where the axis of symmetry is going to be, which gives you the x-coordinate of the vertex, right? The axis of symmetry. So I factor out a 2x, and I'm left with x plus 6. Always double check 
multiply it back out. Okay, so it's concave up. I know where the zeros are now, so it has zeros are zero and minus six. So that means the axis of symmetry is going to be in the middle. So I add them up, I divide by two, zero plus minus six divided by two is minus three. So x equals minus three is the equation of the axis of symmetry. So if I want to know what the minimum value is now, I need to evaluate the function when x is minus 3. So now I go back here and I say, well, f at minus 3 is 2 times minus 3 squared plus 12 times minus 3. That's going to give me 9 times 2 is 18 minus 36, and I get negative 18. So the vertex... Vertex is minus 3 minus 18, and the minimum value is 18. Minimum value. The, the next example I want to do for you is going to um, involve um, a factoring question. So we're just going to factor this one. So let's take a look at this. Bring it up here. We're going to factor and it's going to be x squared minus 8x plus 12 and we'll just call this one y this time and I want to find whether it has a maximum or minimum value so right away you know it's positive the a value is positive there's a 1 in front here so that means it's going to be concave up like this concave up past the cup minimum minimum value so I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 12 and have a sum of minus 8. And you should know minus 6 times minus 2 gives you positive 12. And minus 6 minus 2 will give you minus 8. So now I have x minus 6 and x minus 2. That's now factored form. But that doesn't tell me where the x of symmetry is. It tells me where the zeros are. So... Basically, I've got this, right? I've got something like this. So let's see, 2, 4, 6, and 2. So that gives me the zeros. The axis of symmetry is right in the middle. What's the axis of symmetry? Well, it's going to be x equals 4, right? We've got x equals 4 is the axis of symmetry. And now if I want to know the height at that, I'm going to evaluate this function when x is 4. So y equals 4 squared minus 8 times 4 plus 12. And that's going to be 16 minus 32 plus 12. That would be 28 minus 32 is minus 4. So that means that the vertex is going to be at 4 and minus 4. So it's going to go like this. And it has a minimum of minus 4 when x equals 4. So I found the minimum value by finding the x-coordinate of the vertex, which is also the axis of symmetry. So this coordinate is going to be on here. So 4 minus 4. Okay, so that's how you, you would do that one. Now the other... The other method they like you to do is called completing the square. And we're going to try a completing the square using this equation here. So I've got, um, I'm going to use the same equation here. Okay, so let's complete the square. So we're going to call it f at x this time. So f at x equals x squared minus 8x plus 12. Now when you complete the square, you take half the coefficient of x, square it, add it, subtract it, take it out of the bracket. Now I've had some success teaching completing the square by using an actual square like this. Algebra tile day. 
So I have 1x squared. Remember x squareds are, um, it's a square like this, right? So this would be your x squared tile. And then you have minus 8x's. So in order to me, for me to make this into a square, I would have to add the same number of x's on each side. So I'm going to put minus 4x's here and minus 4 here. And the question is, how many little ones do I have to add in order to make this fill up the square here? And the answer, of course, is a 4 by 4. So that means 16. So I have x minus 4 because I put minus 4x's here. And I put minus 4x's here. And this band would be x and minus 4. So x minus 4 times x minus 4. So that means this is going to be x minus 4 squared. Now I added 16, so I also have to subtract 16. And you always add the 16 first. So add it and subtract it. Because a perfect square trinomial would have a plus 16. So that gives me x minus 4 squared minus 4, which leads me to the same conclusion that I had using the zeros. So 4 and minus 4. So I'm going to write that out just one other way. If you didn't follow the square tiles, you'd say you take half the coefficient of x, so half of minus 8 is minus 4. You're going to square it. So you add 16, you subtract 16, and you still have your 12 that was here. This is a perfect square trinomial, and from that you get the x minus 4 squared, and this of course gives you minus 4. So those are the, um, the techniques that your textbook shows you. Complete the square, use the zeros, but I'm going to show you one way that's even easier. And again, I'm telling you, it's not in your book, and I, I don't understand why they never use it. And this is to use when you have your equation in standard form. So let's go back to the one that we just did. f of x equals x squared minus 8x plus 12. <clears throat> so in order for me to find the x of symmetry, I can use this little equation. x equals minus b over 2a. And you may recognize that as being part of the quadratic formula, right? The quadratic formula negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, negative b. So here it is right here, this part here. So you may remember also from grade 10 that what's under here is considered the discriminant, which tells you the nature of the roots. We're not doing that today, but that's part of it. So minus b over 2a will always give you the x-coordinate of the vertex. Watch, I put in minus b. This is your b value here, right? So we have ax squared plus bx plus c. So I have minus b over 2a, and a is 1. So I have over 2. That gives me 8 over 2, which was equal to 4. And that's the very same thing we got by adding the zeros up and dividing by 2, and also the same value we got for the x-coordinate when we completed the square. This is so much easier than completing the square, though, right? It's one little tiny formula, which should be recognizable to you from this part of the quadratic formula, which you should know very well. So now that I have 4, then I would just go back and find f at 4 and plug in 4 everywhere I have. We already did this, so I'm just going to do it quickly. And you'll get the same answer as we did on the other page, which I think was uh, minus 4. So 4 minus 4 is the vertex. It's the vertex. This was concave up. It's a minimum value of minus 4 when x is 4. Okay, let's do one more. Um, this is D number 4D on page 153. And I'm just going to do this one quickly using the um, 
minus b over 2a formula to show you again how quick it is to work with. So here's the equation. If you were going to factor it, you'd have to take out a common factor, right? But we're not going to do that formula. We're going to use x equals negative b over 2a. That's going to give me the x-coordinate of the vertex. So minus, minus 12. This is my b. So I'll write it over here. a is minus 3 and b is minus 12. So I plug that in here. Minus, minus 12. Don't forget the minus, minus over 2 a's. And that's going to give me 12 over minus 6, which is minus 2. So now I have the x coordinate. All I have to do is find the height when x is minus 2. So when x equals minus 2, y is equal to minus 3 times minus 2 squared, minus 12 times minus 2 plus 15. Make sure your format is nice. 4 times minus 3 is minus 12. Minus 12 times negative 12, that's plus 24, plus 15. So that gives me minus 12 and 15 is a 3, and 24 gives me 27. So that gives me right away and very quickly that this is the vertex. And because it's concave down, it's concave down, it's going to have a maximum, maximum value of 27, of 27, and you need to write when x is equal to minus 2. That tells you you know where it is. So that's the easy way to do it. This minus b over 2a, x equals minus b over 2a, hooray! Easiest way to find the x coordinate of the vertex, then all you have to do is plug it into the equation to find the y. Hope that helps.